Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. Shade of blue. Beautiful. Say, can you tell me on what happened last night? What? Sure, I can fill you in. <laughs> it all started. When Harvey Holmes' boss told me he had to give this big out of town buyer a fling. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, poor Harvey, he's not the time. So who did he come to? Ma, the fling to you, so. <laughs> And from all reports, they had a blast. Yeah, well, that's it, huh? Well, that's it. I've got a couple of minor complications. Do you like that pink? Love it. What kind of complications? Well, A, <laughs> the big out-of-town buyer thinks the boss is Harvey Helm, and Harvey is Bob Collins. Oh, no. And B, he had such a good time, he's going to stay over one more night. <laughs> Poor Bob, he must be dead. Oh, not the man of iron. Mm -mm, no, sir, he's in there right now. Photographing a bathing suit model. We can check on him when I take these in. Oh, oh he's here for a second. Yeah. Uh, I'm dying to see him. Are they for sale? Oh, no, just a couple of things I did for the dressing room. <laughs> As a draft? I'm an old-fashioned girl. I paint only practical things. Oh, like what? Like men and women. <laughs> oh, you had me. <laughs> oh, look. Hard at work. Told you he was an iron man. <laughs> Any trouble focusing, boss? Boss? <laughs> Well, you know, if you get 20 volts of sleep now, you'll be all right, and I'm sure you'll get... Good afternoon, ladies. Harvey, how nice you look. <laughs> Thank you. What's the occasion, Mr. Helm? Well, ladies, you are now looking at the new vice president of the Gravener Furniture Company. Congratulations! Thank oh, it's wonderful. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> when did this happen? Tomorrow morning. Yes, but as soon as Bobby hands me that order from Mr. Henderson, and if he entertains him tonight the way that he did last night, oh, it'll be quite an order. Oh, at last I'll get Ruthie off my back about that raise. You may have some bad news. Oh, Margaret, what could be bad news to me today? Oh, nothing. Bob can't entertain Henderson again tonight. <laughs> You found something, Margaret. Oh, you dug up a beaut. Is, is Bobby sick? No, but he's exhausted. Oh, is that? Oh, for heaven's sake, I thought there was something. Well, you don't know. Sound asleep. All right, I, 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 I just, just watch. Bobby boy, it's fun time. Champagne, pretty girls, dancing. <laughs> Bobby, are you all right? Bobby, Bobby, girls! See, he's asleep. Are you sure he's not dead? <laughs> Bobby! Bobby! Yeah, don't be reasonable. Uh, yeah, he was up all night and he's worked all day. Look, he can't take another night. You don't understand. He has got to entertain Henderson. Please, let me talk to him. He'll do it for no, me. No, no. The last thing he said before he dropped off was call hard, tell him I can't make it. That's right, Mr. Helm. Well. Well, I guess that this is it. Yes, I'll just have to face Ruthie without that raise. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh? Oh, it's all right. When your number's up. <laughs> Poor Harvey, he looks so desperate. Oh, he's not nearly as afraid of Ruthie as he pretends to be. He must get that coffee. Oh, okay. Oh, this is a 
She woke you with her screaming, but I... Uh, oh, dear. Uh, Bobby, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to wake you up. But, Bobby, I've got to talk to you. I'm sorry, old buddy, but I'm desperate. <laughs> mm. <laughs> buddy... Hubby! Mm. Hubby! Sorry. Hi, Harv. I'm Hi. sorry I had to wake you, Bobby. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm glad you did, Harv. Oh, I was perspiring like crazy. <laughs> How long have I been asleep? Oh, hours and hours. Yeah, you look very rested. Gee, I do. Gee, it's funny, I still feel tired. <laughs> Me, Farm, I think I better change this shirt. All right, buddy. <laughs> you go in and get all ready for tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you're entertaining Mr. Henderson, the big out of town buyer, who thinks that you're me. Harp, I wouldn't go through another night with that windbag for all the mahogany and grand rapids. <laughs> Can this be my old buddy talking? Can this be the man who went through the war with me? This is the man. Can this be the captain whose life I saved? This is the... <laughs> now, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the terror-filled day over France when I jumped from a B-25. Ah. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. You don't... We had to jettison later, crash. Uh, you're not ringing the bell with me. Well, it was the day that you had brought along a stowaway, a sergeant. Oh, hard, that's ridiculous. She was a beautiful wife named Helen. You know that I've eaten them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you jumped, huh? Don't you remember? Oh, my. We were losing altitude fast. In order to say... <laughs> How can you get rid of any more weight? We've thrown everything we've got overboard. Not everything, sir. Take over. Take over, sir. Where are you going, Harv? Harv. Harv, no, don't do that. Harv, you'll be captured or killed. Say that again. Adieu, mon capitaine. Harv, wait a minute. Harv, wait a minute, boy. You run a Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're brave, all right, Hard. You're brave. Look, since you're so brave, why don't you just run on home and face Ruthie and tell her that you didn't get a raise? I may be brave, but I'm not out of my mind. Well, neither am I. And I'm going to go to bed tonight. Now, Bobby, if you take a look at these pictures of my children, children, and then I want you to tell me whether or not you're going to allow their... Bob is there. I said, hey, read her job. I'll call. Oh, oh no! Don't do that. Oh, Harv. Harv, old man. Why? Oh, Harv. You were going to jump with your children's pictures in your head. <laughs> I had no idea this meant this much to you. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll entertain Heather for tonight. You feel better now, old buddy? I'm fine, man. Good. My, don't ever do that again, Hart. You, you have no idea. Oh, 
old babes kill a wine, half Henderson here, and he looks divine. <laughs> Boy, why didn't you tell me that they dress like this in Hollywood? What? Well, we must have looked like a, like a couple of dude tourists in those tuxedos last night. <laughs> Let me show you the one I got for you, son. I want to show you something going to knock your eyes out. <laughs> How about that, boy? Ah, we're really going to make a splash tonight, uh -huh. <laughs> Look at that jacket. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, now there's a real cute number. Yes, sir. She's one of my pop mothers. Say, uh, why don't you give her a jingle, boy, and join Harv and me tonight? You know, you look like a man who could use a little fun. Thank you, sir. Mr. Henderson, sir. Hat. But, uh, half, sir. But I have work to do tonight. You know something, Colin? What, sir? You are really dull. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. I suppose I am, especially compared to my friend Harvey Helm. Oh, you can say that again. It's a good thing you ain't in the furniture business, boy. You couldn't sell an ass straight ahead with Arm Merle. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that, do you? No, son. Boy, you are so. <laughs> uh, well, there's my buddy, boy. How do you like it? Ain't it a gaffer? Yes, yes. They, they ought to sell these with bicarbonate in the pocket. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, though. You know, I, I don't think this one is quite for me. Oh, but I think it's terrific, Mr. Henderson. Oh, this is beautiful, Mr. Henderson. You like it, boy? Yes, sir. Then why don't you just go back there and slip it on? It might brighten you up a bit. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Awful dull man. <laughs> Pitiful. <laughs> Uncle Bob? Uncle Bob, can I catch a ride home? Sure, Chuck. Oh, hello, Mr. Helm. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Bob. Hi, Chuck. Mr. Helm, I know. Uncle Bobby, I tell you, I know how terribly busy you are, so I'll just run your nephew home for you. Oh, thank you very much, Harvey. Uncle Bob. Hold it, boy. <laughs> that explains it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. College today is a waste of time. Just confuses a boy. <laughs> Collins, why don't you pull this boy out of school and put him to work here, taking photographs of these models? Yeah, how about that, Uncle Bob? Well, we'll talk about that, Chuck. Right now, you run along with Mr. Hill. Yeah, yeah, come on, Chuck. Uncle Bob, Hat, I'll call you later at, at the hotel. Right, all right. You better pull me out of college before I'm a complete wreck. <laughs> oh, that boy is confused. Your nephew, huh? Yes, sir. Whole family's pitiful. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Red, I mean I've lost my head about red. The bold, bright, bright. Red, red, you get when you use bold. Bold brightens reds with a colorful shower. A blue, white, and green brightening power. Red, 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 red. I mean exactly what I said. Red, if you like red, you'll love bright red bold. I mean it's bold and so red. <laughs> 
It was the first full decade of sound movies, a time when men were men, the women were stylish, and the world was black and white. Personally, I think it's a lot of hooey. This was the 1930s, when new stars appeared, as did a new sophistication. The whole thing smashed the chicanery. And things got a little daring. Sample this fascinating era of change every weekday on Channel Pittsburgh's matinee movie. I hope it turns out all right. The play's the thing, as Jack Lemmon and Eva Marie Saint find romance in the world of Tin Pan Alley. I wonder if those steamship lines allow you to change your wife. Sure, if you don't do it in midstream. June Moon on the next Revisiting Studio One. They had one shot to get it right. Relive America's flight to the moon on the next Moments in Time. Yeah, every, everything's all set, Harv. I'm leaving right now to pick up Shirley and Colette. Oh, wonderful, Bobby. Well, look, I, I'm writing out a new order now, so as soon as Henderson is ready to sign, you call me at the office, and I'll whoop right over there. Well, you won't have to wait very long. I'm going to nail him early tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? Ruthie. No, no, I haven't seen her, Harv. Well, any, anyway, Bobby, thanks a million, and uh, good luck. Yeah. Oh, now, Colette, honey, I don't like being stuck with Henderson and Shirley tonight any more than you do. But if you'll cooperate, I'll show you how we can get rid of them early. We can? How? You dance the legs off Henderson. But he's Shirley, Dave. Well, honey, I know that, but you see, Shirley can't take it like you can. She, she's older. Me? That is true. You see, you see, if you help wear Henderson down, he'll take her home early. And then you and I'll be alone. Okay, Bobby. To be alone with you, I do. Ah, oh, good. Now, Henderson's waiting at the club, so I'll drop you off there, and then I'll go pick up Shirley. Why me, sir? Well, well so you can start wearing Henderson down. Remember, Shirley's older, poor thing. <laughs> oh. Sweet. Hello, Mother Donald. Mrs. Harvey. <laughs> yes, is Ruthie there? Oh, oh, no, 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 there's nothing wrong. No, no, I just thought that she might be visiting with... No, we haven't quarreled, Mother Tuttle. <laughs> no, no, you see, I was just talking with Bobby, and he said that she wasn't... I didn't say I was with Bobby. I said I was... Mother Tuttle, please, there's nothing wrong. You see, I'm just trying to locate... I did not strike your daughter. <laughs> Mother... I am mere... I didn't... I am not raising my voice! You... <laughs> oh, my aching uncle. Mother Tuttle, I, I'm still here. No, Mother, I was just drinking. <laughs> I am not in a bar. I am... <laughs> Mother dear! I did not say another beer. <laughs> I said mother beer. Beer. Now, Shirley, honey, I, I don't like being stuck with Colette and Henderson tonight any more than you do. But look, if you'll cooperate, I'll show you how we can get rid of them early. Really, Bob? How? You dance the legs off of Henderson. Well, why me? He's Colette's day. Oh, I know, honey, but you see, oh, poor Colette. She can't do it. She, she's older than you are. Well, <laughs> oh, honey, I, I thought you wanted to help me get rid of the Merlin so we could be alone. Oh, you know I do. Oh, good. Then, then you'll help Colette wear down Henderson, huh? I'll dance his legs off. Oh, that's my baby. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Helm. Hello, Chuck. Hey, your mother just called me looking for you. Really? Yeah, would you like to use the phone? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, would you please give this to Margaret? It's some very special nylons that we've been looking for everywhere, and I finally found them out in Westwood. Sure, Mrs. Helm. Hello, Mother. It's Ruth. He did? From a bar? <laughs> Harvey? Oh, he's with Bob. <laughs> no, Mother. Thank you. Now, let me take care of it. Goodbye. Mom will be right down. Oh, Chuck. 
Do you happen to know if your Uncle Bob is double dating tonight? Yeah, yeah, I heard him phoning two of his swingin'est models. Do you happen to know who the other man is? Well, uh, Uncle Bob referred to him as a big furniture man, but I don't know his name. I do. By any chance, do you know where they're going? No. Oh, say, it seems to me like you mentioned the, uh, the, uh, Mermaid Club. The Mermaid Club? Yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Are you leaving? Oh, I'm joining Harvey at the Mermaid Club. Oh, well, I hear the floor shows a riot. You'll both have a lot of laughs. I expect Harvey to be in stitches. You <laughs> <laughs> have got him worn down, eh? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, look, I've got the order all ready. I'll be right over. I wonder what happened to old Hart. You don't think he's mad because you gals would rather dance with me, do you? Well, hi right there. Oh, too late, honey. I guess you stuck with him. Hey, I think I have a gun in my stocking. Oh, look. Hey, where you been, huh? Well, I was making a few phone calls. Hey, good. I think the blonde is pooping out. Oh. <laughs> Surely, maybe older, but every time my dad says Mr. Henderson, I catch up with him. <laughs> Would you rather sit this one out? Oui. Bye. No, not with me. Okay. Let's go to the cocktail now. Uh, say, Garcon, uh, bring me another one, just like that. Uh, on second thought, you better make it a full one. That was empty. <laughs> Boy, he's duller than Collins. <laughs> well, hello there. Is this Mr. Helms' table? Well, it sure is, honey. Hey, when that Harvey makes a phone call, he sure gets results. Uh, Henderson's my name. H.R. Henderson. My friends call me Hap. Oh, where are Mr. Helm and Mr. Collins? Oh, that Collins is just too dull for us. But uh, old Harv's out there dancing up a storm with a little French babe. I don't see him. Well, maybe they're sitting this one out. <laughs> yeah. You know an old Harv long? Long, but not well. Well, you're going to know him well before this night's over, honey. <laughs> that boy is faster than a hog heading for a bowl of chitlin. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> Man, I've had me some wing dames in my time, but last night with old Harvey and those two gals was the blue-tailed, fur-covered, apple-knocking end. <laughs> and then you were with Mr. Helm last night, too. Oh, honey, we had us a ball, I tell you. <laughs> and he told me he worked late last night at the office. Honey, he worked late, but not at the office. <laughs> well, yeah. would you like to dance, Jennifer? Well, thank you, but I think I'll see if I can find Mr. Helm. Oh, uh, I don't believe I got your name, honey. Uh, Mrs. Helm. Mrs. Helm? Yes. Oh, that's a lovely name. Oh, these California... <laughs> Mrs. Helm. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't, you didn't wear it. <laughs> Bobby, I've got the contract all ready to sign. Oh, yeah. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Block. Come and see him. Let's go to the table and get him things. Oh, well, no, wait a minute, Bobby. Uh, Mr. Henderson doesn't like me very well. I think that I'd better wait right here. Okay. You dance with Colette. I'll get him. <laughs> what? Oh, congratulations. Bobby says this is going to be great for you. Oh, Mr. Block. In just one minute, I am going to be in close. <laughs> How are you doing there? <laughs> fine, boy, fine. Hey, Pat, you know, we wouldn't want anything to get in the way of our having a good time tonight, would we? Well, no, boy. Why don't we just get this furniture order signed and out of the way, huh? <laughs> All right. That's it. Where do I put that, John? Henry? Right on the, on the top line there. Oh, fine. That's all. Right. <laughs> uh, tell me something, Harvey. You a married man? Married me? Are you kidding? <laughs> Why, uh, Shirley, honey, <laughs> am I married? Tell him. Married? <laughs> you? 
Mike, not yet. There you see. <laughs> I must have heard wrong. Uh, where'd I put that now? Right on the top line. There, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are really putting up an exhibition. <laughs> they haven't seen anything yet. We <laughs> show <laughs> them tonight. <laughs> oh, that was funny. You sounded just like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Very much that done. My it. pleasure, boy. Well, there, there comes that little lady who said she was Mrs. Hell. M M Mrs. Hell. Well, my goodness. <laughs> Mother. Well, see, will you ask him to call me as soon as he comes in? Yeah, okay. Oh, just a second, Mr. Hell. Here he is. Uh, call him in New York. Got time. Right. Vice President Hal, which is speaking. Well, congratulations, Har. What are you going to do to celebrate? Bobby, I am going out and I'm going to buy me the biggest, the thickest, the juiciest steak <laughs> in town. Will you join me? You bet I will, Harv. I'll see you later. <laughs> well, I hate to get personal, boss, but who gave you the shiner? Mother. Mother. <laughs> played by King Donovan, Ruthie Helm by Mary Lawrence, Shirley Swanson by Joy Lansing, Colette Dubois by Lisa Gay, The Model by Gloria Marshall, and H.R. Hap Henderson by Bob's special guest, Jess White. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. <laughs> I'm one unlucky guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Mrs. Schwartz? Oh, oh. Excuse me, Mrs. Schwartz. Could you tell us how you feel about oil heat? Oil heat? Oh, well, um, uh, I think oil heat is wonderful. <laughs> See, I'm showering in the school. What's the hot water? All I want, all I can use. And I know for a fact that only oil heat can give me so much, so fast, and it's so dependable. And I've got my dishwasher going, my washer going. <laughs> Myself. You know, everybody, all my friends wouldn't think of buying a house unless it was heated by oil. Oh, everybody thinks it's so dependable. Dependable hot water and dependable comfortable heating in every room in my house. Mrs. Schwartz? Yeah? You know you're on television? Yes, I know. <laughs> oil heat. You can depend on it. 